To say I have felt burnt out by social media lately is an understatement. Let's not sugarcoat it. Social media, for the most part, has turned into a cycle of copying trends and trying to shout the loudest in order to satisfy the notorious algorithm and ultimately have your content seen. Feel free to let me know if I'm way off, but I certainly have been left feeling pretty uninspired by the whole thing lately. And I've talked to lots of people who actually feel the same. So in today's video, the idea is to break down what exactly feels off about it, what we do now, and ultimately, how do you stay inspired as a creative despite the state of the internet currently? I have a lot of thoughts about this, so let's get started. So the first problem I see is this. Let's take Instagram as an example, since that's obviously one of the more popular social media apps. Instagram to me right now kind of feels like an engagement pyramid scheme. And what I mean by that is that it feels like everyone is mindlessly scrolling their feeds and engaging with content, mostly because that's what you are supposed to do but none of the comments have really any depth to them. They all just say, cool, fire emoji, or wow, sick photo. And before you feel attacked, I also do this exact same thing, but essentially what I'm getting at is, it feels like an endless cycle of people posting and commenting stuff, but no one is really having a genuine connection with the content. And this is further backed up by videos about how to hack the algorithm or the algorithm just changed. It now favors people with shorter haircuts. So what you need to do is go grab some good quality clippers and shave all your hair off. And if you wanna know which clippers I recommend, the link is in the description below. You click my affiliate code and... <laughs> okay, obviously I'm joking with that, but yeah, it does feel like a constant cycle of pleasing the algorithm for views and the views aren't really backed up by anything real, which, just leaves me feeling kind of eh about the whole thing. The second big problem I have is that the content on most of these social media apps is passive, which means people are not actively choosing to watch what you have made, but instead are served content in front of them in their feed. And what happens because of this is people just not really paying that much attention to the content being consumed. I personally don't feel like my work gets paid attention to very much. And to be completely honest, I don't really pay that much attention to other people's work on these apps either a lot of the time because it all just kind of ends up blending together into this endlessly scrolling timeline in front of you. One of the reasons I'm actually excited about growing this YouTube channel is that content on YouTube is not passive. So when you go on YouTube, you are choosing to click on what to watch. So the fact that you are here right now watching this means that you clicked on this video. So you probably have at least somewhat of an interest in this topic and what I have to say about it. And that means that the views just are a lot more real and they have more impact. And it's more likely that people are going to be invested in the content. And that basically means that the connection between you as the viewer and me as the creator is a lot stronger here than on these algorithm apps that have feeds that just scroll and serve you up content in front of you. So because of these reasons, and because it's harder to stand out in this weird algorithm world we now live in, people are pushing the limit more and more in terms of louder volume or faster content. And there's all these videos about how you have to hook your viewer in the first second, otherwise they are gone forever. And you have to keep them there, which means doing an insane amount of cuts or basically anything loud. And while this strategy does technically work, what kind of way is that to make something? We're losing the meaningful, quieter content in the midst of all of the yelling, essentially. 
And even if you do hook them for a second, the best case scenario usually is that people are just going to look at your stuff for a few seconds and then scroll along, you know, on their way to the next thing. So in my opinion, this cycle basically leads to a content world where short, shallow, loud, in your face content wins and nobody is really paying attention to any of it anyway. And so that is what has led me to feeling uninspired with this lately. Obviously there are exceptions to the rule. There's people making incredible content out there on these apps. I just, as a user, don't really feel that connection anymore. So what can we do about it? Well, nothing, essentially. Maybe you could cut your hair in exchange for a few more views. Did that callback work? Probably not. Anyway, uh, in all seriousness, here's what I think. So we are not in control of these apps, obviously, but what we are in control of is where we can draw inspiration from and where we can focus our efforts. So personally, I've been spending more time consuming content here on YouTube, watching movies, reading books, listening to podcasts, and even just trying to draw inspiration from day-to-day -day life. YouTube is one of the few platforms where I actually do feel inspired to make content on because you can tell meaningful stories on here. You can make long form content, 10 minute videos, and people actively choose to commit to watching at least a good section of your video instead of mindlessly scrolling by it after a few seconds. I also think it's really important to think about how you are spending your time and really question if you are building real life skills. So. Think about this for a second. If all of the social media apps disappear tomorrow and all you have focused on is making iPhone video reels with trendy sounds, what are you gonna do with that? That's not a real life skill that translates really to anything else. You're basically building up your skill set on a rug that can get pulled out from under you at any time. Whereas if you spent your time practicing filmmaking as an example or photography or any number of other real life skills that translate over, that will always be valuable. Like it will always be valuable to be able to tell stories in a visual medium. So in conclusion, does this mean I'm going to completely stop using social media apps? No. And the point of this video isn't to tell you what to do either. I still think they have enough value for me to keep using them, but I will be allocating my focus a bit differently this year, basically, and consistently checking in to make sure that I'm working on projects that inspire me and are pushing my real life skill sets instead of spending my time on these apps all the time, just kind of for the sake of it. So that's it for today's video. Please, especially on this topic, I would love to hear what you think, since I have a feeling there might be some opposing views on this one, which is actually a good thing. I genuinely want to hear your thoughts on this and have an open discussion on the state of internet content right now, basically. But I guess above all else, the main thing I would love to hear is what is your plan to stay inspired this year in your creative field? So please let me know that in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the like button if you are still watching. And other than that, I will see you in the next rant video or regular video, probably regular video. I'll see you in that one.